Are you still paying your credit cards and so-called bank loans thinking that you owe the money? Do you feel like it's your moral obligation but can't see an end in sight? Well, what if I told you that in truth, you don't owe a single penny and that the banks know this and hope you don't find out? Here's where we come in. Free2Prosper.com specializes in a profound debt repudiation method which challenges the validity of your so-called debts, morally frees you from the burdens, and protects your property. Our system is often superior to settlement, bankruptcy, or consolidation, which often leave you in a worse situation. If you feel the moral obligation to take care of yourself and your family, then I urge you to consider taking action right now. The economy will not wait. If you want to know more so you can prosper through the economic collapse, all while staying honorable and true to yourself, then call 877-417-8393. That's 877-417-8393. Or visit freetoprosper.com right now. Hey, it's me, Shepard, the host of the Intel Hub. Check out my live show every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can check it out from my website, theintelhubradio.com. Join me, Joe Joseph, John King, and A.C. Griffith, Thursdays and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern for Freedom Link Radio on the Intel Hub News Network. A very wealthy U.S. citizen is predicting that in 2011, we will witness the most important day in America in more than 50 years. He says it will change everything about our lives. The way you shop, travel, invest, educate your children, and even how you take care of your health and family. Now this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years, but the crazy part is he's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, General Growth Properties, a few years ago. In fact, Baronis called his work a dire prophecy. Now, this has nothing to do with the stock market, but it could have a huge impact on almost every aspect of your life. And recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet. And it's a real eye-opener. I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can find the video at www endofamerica8.com Although this video may be offensive to some audiences, it's worth checking out. Again, that's www.endofamerica8.com Watch this free video at www.endofamerica8.com You are listening to the Intel Hub News Network Crushing the New World Order piece by piece back, folks. Anybody that wants to uh, visit our website, the website is www.thefreedomlinkradio.com. You can go listen to our archive broadcast there as well as look at uh, the King's Court is posted after every show. And uh, we put from time to time our opinion on things in the hopes that uh, maybe we'll give you either a different opinion or confirm what you are thinking. Now, Griff, you've been eerily silent the last half hour. Yes, I have. <laughs> what, <laughs> what would you like for me to comment on? I don't know. Why don't you just uh, tell me what you're thinking about what we've been saying? Well, I hate to I hate to break the uh, the train of thought that Margot and Tom have going there. Um, I think what's coming up will make the courts irrelevant, more irrelevant than they are today. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen justice come out of courts, certainly not out of federal courts. The attorney general is a, is a joke. He's, uh, he's no more, more an attorney general than I'm an airplane pilot. And the Obama administration <laughs> has acted as, as though they were fascist. They have agendas. 
Their agenda is not the, the agenda of the states or the people. They've created chaos and confusion and diverted people to watch the right hand, their right hand, while their left hand was doing something else with the health care bill. Health care bill has nothing to do with benefiting the people. It's a diversion and create uh, discord and chaos among the people, among the states. And further, if they were able to get it through, it would help bankrupt the country. I have always said that I believe the Obama administration and his handlers and the handlers for this administration were attempting to, to dissolve the country, yeah. to bring the country down. We see it going on over in uh, in uh, Libya today. Gaddafi is, is on the run. Uh, more and more states over there are, are falling. And sooner or later, our oil will be affected and cut off. And that's going to have a devastating effect on us. I don't know that um, the courts will even uh, be relevant when the when the 46 states that are in trouble now finally uh, bite the uh, the dust, who cares about the court? Who cares about whether or not the uh, the courts uh, accept bankruptcy from the states? You know, you're going to have 300 million hungry people that are going to be pissed off, and they are armed. The American people are armed. The only country in the world we have more guns than the military, and and I can see the anger rising. I think Obama wants uh, riots in the United States. I think I think that's part of the program, and I and I think he'll probably get it too. And, uh, well, let me God ask knows. you this, Griff. You you were you were around during the race riots of the late '60s and early '70s. Do you do you see it similar to that, only uh, a little more intense? A little I mean, what, more intense. I a would, little I more, would, uh, just a tad bit, uh, a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by a, a multiplier of a thousand or so. Because, because you know the greatest race race riots happened in uh, Cadillac Square in Detroit, Michigan, many mm -hmm. many years ago. They were, but nobody ever talks about the race riots in the North, do they? They're always in the South in Alabama. But oh the, no, the big no, ones no. Were in the North. As a matter yeah. of fact, uh, in in Massachusetts, uh, that we learned about that in high school. Believe it or not, because Springfield, uh, where I was born and raised, was dam was darn near brought to its knees. Because of that, because of the race riots, and um, it, it's it's interesting because there is a precedent for civil unrest in this country, whether it be the Civil War, uh, whether it be the you know the race riots. Um, there is a precedent, but nothing like we are are getting ready to see here. I mean, look around us, guys. We we've got civil unrest occurring all over the world. I mean, this isn't just an isolated incident, and it begs the question, uh, is this being set off on purpose? And for the ad for that answer, I'm going to bring on Gwen from South Dakota. Gwen, you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> well, did you hear my question? I did, by golly. Uh, I think that this whole breakdown worldwide is absolutely by design. And I think the fact that we are armed is the only restraint that has prevented a revolution in this country to date. Um, yesterday, my friend called me. She was just outraged. They've got a bill in Congress to support NASA. Pentagon wants to support NASA. And I told, I told my other friend, I think they are, they are just trying to provoke the people. They're trying to put up the people. Yeah, I, I agree with Griff. I think I think it, they want. I think that's exactly what they want. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Think about this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pose this to you, Tom. You have a budget, right? And and whether or not a dollar is relevant or not doesn't matter because this is kind of like a poke in the eye, if you ask me. Is that you have a budget? where we're running a, say, on average, a $1.5 trillion shortfall every year. And then the party that's just been given power in the House of Representatives comes out and says, well, you know, our plan says we're going to save $2.5 trillion over 10 years. You know, And I do simple math. I'm no math genius. But I divide that number by 10, and I get $250 billion a year. I subtract it from $1.5 billion, and we're still running an, uh, an enormous – deficit 
what do you think? Do you think that's something to egg people on? I mean, they can't be serious, can they? Well, n- numerically, it's a drop in the bucket, and, you know, whatever they cut, they extend it over five years, so with inflation, it does absolutely nothing. But the truth of the matter is the people who are getting hurt are the people who are getting cut off in the bottom. And whether or not they deserve to be there or not, people have gotten used to these handouts, whether it be Social Security, Medicare, uh, food assistance, and you start cutting them off and and, and you're going to have unrest. You start, you know, you you look at what the banks are getting. I'm, I'm not talking about the the bank, SunTrust Bank, or people like that. I'm talking about Goldman Sachs, the World mm-hmm. Banks, you know, the, the IMF. They are the ones getting all this money, and they're cutting up bonuses equivalent to the size of certain countries' GDPs. And mm-hmm. they're telling the people, "You've got to suffer. You've got to cut back." And oh, by the way, we're going to raise your taxes too. That's where the problem is. That's where we have to address our attack. Cut them off. I know that means default, and I know that means throwing us into uh, financial chaos, but it's time to reset because otherwise they're going to slowly cut us off until the prison door slams shut and we're all going to be slaves. Yeah. We need to take care of the people here first. Screw the banks. Arrest Paulson. Arrest Geithner. Arrest Bernanke. You know, they're they're guilty of financial and uh, intellectual fraud. That's easily provable. Don't cut the people off because what you're telling them is let them eat cake, and they don't understand the attack they're under, and they're going to riot. When people are hungry, they're going to riot. We need to address our people first to hell with the banks. Amen to that. I I totally agree with you. I think the problem with that train of thought is that there aren't enough people with that train of thought, or if they they are – and there are a lot of people that think the way that we do, Tom, and I totally agree with you – it's having the cojones to stand up and say, no more. I'm done. I'm not playing with you. You want to know something? You can't take out taxes out of my check anymore. I will not let you do that. You know, I will not pay income tax. And well, not, there, there's going to be a, there's going to be a tax. Not only, be, not, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Not only that, but the banks have got their people ensconced all through the system, up and right. down. The judges, the banksters, the the police system. They're all funded by the banksters, right? And they're going to be loyal right. to they're going to be loyal to the people who are paying them. That's right. Now and I kind of hate to say this, but I kind of hope the government shuts down yep. and they shut down through tax day because then how is the IRS going to be able to collect anything? It's going to nope. be awesome. So. You're, you're you're right. It's kind it's kind of like this, you know. It, it it's a it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario because no matter what happens, change is going to be uh, difficult. It's going to cause a lot of problems with everybody, and a lot of people have hitched their wagon to the federal government. So if the federal government shuts down and people stop getting Social Security payments, if the military stops getting their paycheck, and it happens because DFAS, Defense Finance, accounting service, I think it's called. If DFAS stops cutting checks, you know, for for the military, uh, that that's that's a that's a huge issue. That's a huge that's a major major issue, and and it's happened before. We've had government shutdowns before, but it's only been a short period of time. Now, what's interesting is the government pays out on a biweekly basis, so every other Friday they get paid. The last, uh, the end of the or the the last pay cycle is March fourth. That's the day uh, that uh, government employees will be paid. After that, the government kind of has a two week window of opportunity before they have to pay out again. And that's going to be interesting to see is how long they let it go, if it does shut down. And I, if it does shut down, folks, I'm saying there are going to be some very very angry people out there. Very angry, but it may be the catalyst that we're looking for to actually affect some real change. I don't know. What do you think, Margo? I do, and and let me tell you why. When the government shuts down, um, people will not be able to get their unemployment in some cases. People will not be able to continue receiving their benefits because the 